Hey guys, it's Trina from John's Furniture Repair and we have got a exterior door last of the season in the shop and it's a doozy. Let me show you some details. Okay, so this is an oak exterior door to a sun porch on the front of an old house and we've got it in for repairs and it is definitely time for this door to see some love. We've got a lot of dry rot going on with pieces of trim completely rotten and uh, really, you know, not keeping any of the weather out of the house at all anymore. Um, a lot of issues down here. You can just see the, the amount of dry rot going on here. And I can imagine once we get this kick plate off, there'll be some surprises. And we've got pieces that are completely missing here and just have probably just decayed and rotted away. And this one's on its way as well. You can just pull pieces away from everything. Um, other pieces seem to be okay. Good thing the paint was still on them, but definitely the surfaces that received the um, moisture, which is, you know, the horizontal surfaces or angled surfaces that were on the bottom are gonna see more. So we'll try to replicate that trim as best we can and we're going to be taking all of this hardware off and we're not sure if we're going to keep this piece here um, this looks like an original uh, solid brass handle here that we'll definitely keep and this is the customer security system so obviously the exterior door has been painted and that's not what we're going to be going for uh, i've got the door on the spit here so let me show you the interior just pull my pin here and swing it around sorry i'm doing this one-handed that pin back in okay so here's the other side the base of it's in pretty rough shape um, again like all of the horizontal surfaces that received moisture they've gotten really rough over the years and everything's cracking finishes cracking off I'm sure under this we'll see some lovely things and yeah so at least this wasn't painted inside but we're going to get all of this finish off and and redo it as well and uh, it's always kind of tricky working around glass but we might have to take a lot of it out just to repair the trim anyways this centerpiece here that is frosted um, does have some scratches and things in the frosting. So um, we'll see if we're gonna keep that privacy frost or not. Um, but you can see like the caulking that's just been messily applied to the other side is shattering through to the inside. So making it look not very nice and the paint and everything was sloppy. So this just needs a pretty amazing amount of work cleanup, repair, and beautifying. So first things first, I'm gonna get all this hardware off of here and start breaking it down. After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop. And after 25 years, I can truly say, I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300 year old hand carved piece of history, or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna, and this is John's Furniture Repair.
So I just um, sent a whole bunch of questions to my customer about the door, about asking about the weather stripping, if we're putting the brass kick plate back on, all kinds of stuff. So um, this is a frosted coating that someone put on at some point and it's got a few scratches just from life in there. So we're gonna be removing this coating so it's just clear glass like the other, um, I wish it came off in a more satisfying way, but it doesn't. Um, so it's at the bottom of the door too. So I don't know what the frosting was for. Like I guess people were worried about having their toes seen. But anyways, we'll get that all off. So it'll be nice, clear, clean glass. And then I was talking about the trim, which we need to replace a lot of, and we're gonna try to just go with whatever they have. So we'll probably be replacing all of the exterior uh, window trim. And a lot of it's broken and, and uh, missing. So it's better if we just do a whole new trim on everything, unless they have this exact trim, then I, you know, I should probably check that first. But anyways, I'm gonna take all of the windows out and I'm gonna, clean them up aside because they all have excess caulking and paint, which you, you don't put it on the outside of the windows. You put it underneath when you put your plate glass down. But of course, over the, over the years, it probably was just sealed up as they could and they didn't remove the trim to do it the proper way. So this way we'll be able to seal the glass properly and weatherproof the door. So I'm just gonna work on getting all this really gunky, overcocked trim off and getting all these pieces of glass out and cataloged, as well as the trim pieces cataloged because there are some pretty weird angles that I'd like to copy. It's easier to copy than to figure it out again. And uh, yeah, so by the time we get all this stuff off of here, there'll just be a frame and a few of these center pieces to strip. So not a lot in the stripping paint department, which is, I get lucky on that point, but not in a lot of other ones in this job. The other thing we're gonna do is um, fill this deadbolt. He doesn't use it anymore and he might be getting a whole new lock set. He's thinking of going a different color and kind of modernizing this look a little bit. And that really shiny brass is kind of ugly anyways. The old handle's not bad, but that really, really shiny 80s glass is not my cup of tea. So that'll be nice too. All right, so I've got all of the glass out and you can see I've got all the little numbers here, cataloging everything. So now it's just down to stripping everything off. I'm gonna use stripper to clean up the paint. And a lot of this I can scrape off with a chisel because it's really heavy caulking. Down here where the rot was the worst, I'm gonna have to use some epoxy to fill and stabilize the wood. And we probably will have to replace um, a bit of the wood down here as well. I can't put a new frame in this door because I can't um, build it after it's put together like this, but we may just try to put some uh, stabilizing wood marine grade epoxy in there just to get it back so it's strong and structural and then just get rid of the rest of everything that's going on here. And nicely that, that the kick plate actually protected the wood here, so that's good. And there's just a little bit of dry rot and all that kind of stuff going on everywhere. So we'll just work with the stripper and get this thing cleaned up.
right, so I've got all the paint off of this side here and come to the realization that this door has been mounted with the wrong side out. Usually the pieces that you can remove, like this is one piece here and that this side here needs to be against the weather because water can't seep between any seams here on this trim. But they've had this side out and that's why the trim and everything's been getting so waterlogged in here. So we have to go to the house and figure out if they switched it at some point and see if we can switch it back and all that jazz. Anyways, so this is supposed to be the inside of the door and it's really uh, not meant to be out there. So it's taken a beating. We've got rotten wood all along here. And in this point here is really bad. So all this stuff that I've got here, I'm soaking with the wood hardener. Um, this stuff here, you can just buy it in Canada at Home Hardware. Anyways, it's just uh, rehardening a lot of the wood that's really punky and soft. And then I'll have to do um, some epoxy work and filling. And uh, this will have to go back on the inside because this is really not meant to to uh, have weather get to it. So I'm just gonna let that dry overnight and uh, be back at it tomorrow. Got quite the mess going on here. All right, so it's Monday and all the hardeners had a lot of time to dry. Everything is nice and hard now so I can go on with the repairs. Same thing here. Nothing's flaking away anymore everything's hard. So um, what I'm going to do now is actually sand the heck out of this door with one, uh, 80 grit and then go up to 100, 120. I won't probably go past 120 and uh, see if I can get this wood to look any better. And uh, I think he wants to go pretty light. He doesn't want to go for a dark brown. So I'm going to try to see if we can get this up. We will have to replace uh, some wood right here as well, um, some wood right there. So we'll probably router out a section and add in some new oak. But everywhere else is good. Other than the trim, I have to go to the, the uh, mill shop and pick up some new trim. So I'm just going to pop my festival together here and sand, sand, sand. Okay, so I did quite a bit of sanding on this and then we did the oxalic acid uh, three times and it really lightened up a lot of these uh, watermarks here, especially on this piece. Um, there were big black marks right there. They're much lighter now, so I'm happy with that. I've got a big bucket of water. I'm going to rinse this, all these crystals off of here before I do anything else. Um, and we do have to get started on some of this carpentry that we need to take care of. I went off to the mill shop this morning and ordered a bunch of quarter round. I don't have, um, they don't have anything a little bit closer to what was there. So we're just going to use a nice quarter round that they do have to cut down to a half inch. So I ordered 50 feet of that. Can you believe it? 50 feet. It's just because of all the triangles. And that'll probably be ready in the next couple of days, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so we can get this wood replaced here over there and I'm thinking of um, taking out a section here because this is pretty toast and it's all very soft and and worn away here up to here so if I did a router 
out this way, I could replace it with a piece of oak and uh, just laminate it onto that section. So I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna do that yet, but um, it looks like that's kind of the only way to really make that back to good. So first things first, get it a good rinse before we work with it. Okay, so I've got this whole piece glued on at the bottom here. Now I have to deal with these two guys and this. So I'm just gonna cut uh, back to about here where the rot stops. Even though I've used the hardener on all this, I wanna replace this top area of wood, uh, kind of veneer it on top because it's missing down here. And then this one as well, just not as far up, but pretty much. So I'm just gonna make a cut a straight across. <coughs> Go about that far down. And then same thing on the other side. Okay, so I've got it all flattened out and got some stock cut here. Oops, wrong side. Cutting it to length here first. Because I'm not quite sure this miter ends, but when I have the two pieces, then I can do that. So I know I need at least this much length for piece number one. And then I'll cut another rough length piece for piece number two. Okay, so I've got them here so I can know exactly where they intersect. So this one's gonna need to come down at a 45 here. Uh, I already cut my 45 on this one. So we'll just give that one last cut. Okay, so there it is. A little bit complicated, needs some, uh, it's a little fat yet, so I need to take it down pretty much on all areas, but I've got the dimensions there pretty well. And I need to cut this piece out of this. So I'm just gonna uh, trace this out with some paper and transfer it to here. Okay, so I've got all the pieces um, cut and fit. So I'm gonna be gluing them on with uh, my marine grade epoxy which is the west system because it is waterproof and that's what i glued on this uh, strip on as with, with as well and i'm just going to actually get it into all of these fibers because it's going to help add strength even where the wood is still missing even though we put the hardener in there So I'm just going to put this piece in first and then a long piece.
All right, so it's the next day and I got this epoxied in, kind of like an eighth inch veneer in here, kind of like a door skin, but this is a solid oak door. So just replacing that top layer of wood that was really uh, rotted and uneven everywhere. So uh, I've got the epoxy coming around the corner. So it's all sealed here and here so that no wood can penetrate into this piece. And again, here too, and all along the seam, there's epoxy, so the water should not be able to get in here too easily. Now we just gotta smooth it off and flatten it. This piece wasn't exactly flat, so it's a little bit irregular. So I'm just gonna plane that down and clean it up and sand all of the repairs that we've got going on here. Okay, so I've got the table flipped over to what will be the inside, and we've got the uh, deadbolt hole plugged on this side now too, so that uh, is all done. And then we had a couple of splinters of wood down here and then up top there too that we're gluing up. But other than that, we're going to strip off the finish. I'm anticipating we'll probably need to use the hardener again on this area here all along the bottom is pretty rotted. Uh, even though this was on the inside, it still saw quite a bit of water damage probably coming in you know through all the joints so um the wood will always be better up top here where it didn't get too much but we'll try to blend everything in and the reason why this is supposed to be the exterior because this is one piece if you didn't understand what i was saying before this is all built out of one piece of wood so if water penetrates or gets onto this piece here it just doesn't have a seam here to get into behind this little piece of trim and then warp it and wa and sit back there. So this is really what the exterior should be, but the house, uh, I did stop by this week to see if there's any ind indication that it was put on there the other way and there's not. So just from the day it was built, it was built wrong. So we're just gonna have to stick with this and uh, try to seal up the other sides using some caulking and all other methods that aren't as great as this but gotta do the best we can with what we got here so i'm just going to get on to stripping whatever i can get to and uh, get this side sanded and prepped and then figure out some color So I've got everything stripped and I've put a couple coats of the oxalic acid on the door. It had a pretty black stain right in the middle here. It's lightened up quite a bit, which is good. And then of course down here, um, we're still hoping it goes a little lighter. This is turning out really good. This was a lot of stains on this par portion, but the bottom isn't coming up as much. It has lightened a lot, but there's quite a bit of the mineral uh, staining there and on these parts as well. Now we will be putting a weather stripping back on here. So something will be going across the bottom, but I'm really hoping to uh, be able to get 
a little bit more of the staining up, but it will be covered. And depending on what color stain we go, we might be able to hide it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna let this uh, dry overnight and uh, we'll wash it down tomorrow and give it a really good sand. Okay, so I've got the oxalic acid rinsed off yesterday and everything is dry today. There used to be a giant big black mark in here. Look how nice that came up. And down here too, all that dark staining that was in the middle here is very much lightened up. And uh, we didn't get perfect down here, but it's much better than it was. And we have tons of sanding to do just to even all of this weathered wood out for sure. And this wood is super, super hard. This is a solid oak door. It's not a skinned door. So, you know, usually you can see like a solid core and then you'd have a door skin on top, like an eighth inch door skin. But this is a solid oak door and this oak is hard, hard, hard. So it eats my sandpaper for breakfast. So, and it needs a lot and it takes quite a bit of pressure to get through this patina. And that's good because you want a hard wood for your door, but it makes for tough uh, sanding. So um, basically I just want to get everything even um, and you know, blend in our repairs here, which we'll need to do with color work. And uh, yeah, so I got the uh, Festool Rotex here because it eats wood for breakfast as well. And so these two hopefully will come to an agreement and we'll get uh, this door to a level where we can get a nice stain to penetrate. Okay, so I went over the whole thing with the Rotex setting, which is a constant drive sander and then back over again with the orbital sander setting uh, which is like any orbital sander has like a random pattern and both with 120 and on exterior doors i do not sand past 120 because i really want my mechanical adhesion which is my finish grabbing onto fibers of the wood to be super strong and uh, we're using film finishes so they do need to hang on to something and uh, so I've got all the surfaces done with the sanding machine, but we need to just straighten out the grain with some uh, hand sandpaper. So I am going to be going over all the straight surfaces with the block and this. And then for all of you who are like, how are we going to sand the profiles? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have any easy answers for you, but it's just this. And you can buy a lot of profile uh, help, you know, little pieces of foam that are shaped in different piece sizes and shapes, but really, um, you'd be changing those out constantly and it would waste more time. Your hand is the best thing with your uh, sandpaper folded into three sections so that you'll have another third section here. You've got some nice hard edges to get into, you know, corners like that and get stuff what you need. And you've got one, two, three flat surfaces, and even switching it back from end to end, you can get more usage out of it. So don't fold your sandpaper like this. No, do not just use it like this because it's like super slippery and you can't get a grip on it. This way you've got grippy sides, it fits in your hand nice, you can maneuver it. I can get it into this corner. I can switch it down to go over this round over and then get back into this screw and then come up the other side of that round over and finish off with the inside there and then hit the corners. That's what I'll be doing. So that times however much to get all of this sanded. It won't take that long, but um, that's the only way to do it. And uh, it's the proper way to do it. So don't skip this step. You no, know, it's a major problem when you're trying to get work done and your little kitty just wants to sit on you all day. <laughs> oh, to all my non-cat people, just wait till a cat finds you, because I'm not a cat person, but what am I supposed to do here? She just wants to live on my shoulder, and <sighs> there's just no help for me. <laughs> 
just purring. Yeah, I I think I love you, kid donkey speedo. <laughs> okay, we are ready for stain, and we've got the color. Um, I had my customer look at a door we just finished recently. I'm going to my big cupboard here, and let's see where it went. Looking for. There it is. Oh, almost dropped that. This guy, we're going to be using San Miguel. A little bit of an orange golden color. And uh, we were going to try to go a little bit lighter with the door, but because of all of the repairs, especially on the other side, um, it's going to be nice to have a little bit of color to work with to blend in all the repairs also just a big shout out to the wood mill in windsor ontario um when i came to them with this piece of trim i was like don't worry about it guys just get me some quarter round um to retrim the whole door out with and they're like okay sure we can do that gave them the sample piece come to pick up the trim and they made exact replicas of the original trim so these guys are awesome they're always going above and beyond and if you need any supply or custom pieces made that's where you need to go if you live here so that's awesome because we can put back the original uh, shape on the door so it's basically um, like this on the other side and uh, it'll look like it's always looked like that so I really love doing original work so Thank you very much, guys. So I'm going to get uh, these all stained up as well off the piece. Uh, I'm just going to be um, varnishing them off just because that's a lot easier to deal with than a bunch of little sticks. And then we'll cut them and seal the ends when we install it later. And we've got our giant pile of really dirty glass with all the caulking and stuff all over them. And we'll have to get that cleaned up. And I've got each uh, pile of trim that goes with each uh, piece, and we'll just be copying that angle. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of angle cutting for this job. Uh, weird angles on all those little triangles, so th that'll be tricky. We'll just go one at a time and copy those angles because they did fit nicely, so we'll just go with the original. But I'm gonna get this thing stained up today see how all of the repairs and color and oxalic acid look with the stain on them and then i'll know if i need to do any color work and uh we can get on to varnishing tomorrow if everything's good okay i'm all set up here got my stain mixed let's see how it looks i really like this color um First time I used it was on the last door that we just finished. If you haven't seen our little tour video, we did, we've done quite a few historic doors in Windsor. And we did a little tour in Windsor and all the old houses to see how all the doors were doing that we've done over the last 11, 12 years in Windsor here. And you get to see all the beautiful houses Windsor has some nice houses. I am loving this color. And it looks to me, I haven't wiped it off yet, but it looks to me like it's going on nice and even, which is always the trick with um, super weathered wood that is starting to get a lot of dry rot. Sometimes you can get a really soft area that'll soak up a bunch of stain and then you got a big blotchy stain job. And I'll just go over this edge here because I'll have to just I'll mess up my top here if I do it after. Try to do things in logical ways. Okay. Yeah, I really like how that looks. I think it's going to be a super beautiful color on this door. It 
It's a really traditional color, which I love keeping um, the traditional colors going on some of the old things that looks appropriate. Sometimes you just want to change up color, but this is a really nice classic oak. Kind of a orangey mission oak kind of look. And there we are. So really happy with that. There's a bit of uh, water staining down here, but I think that we're just gonna have to say that's okay. Just right here, some blotches where it would have run down from here in the middle. And uh, that's okay, we can, we can live with that, especially from where it came from. And this doesn't even look that bad, but we do have that uh, uh, weather stripping that's gonna be going across here anyways, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna get to uh, the rest of the door and hopefully it all stains up nice and even. So I spent a good couple hours cleaning up glass yesterday and just making sure it's all ready to go back in. I have all the pieces with the 
the uh, glass that go with them so I can cut the new trim down. Got two coats on the trim and the exterior side of the door and it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna sand it down and give it probably at least two more coats. It's been very thirsty and just soaking it right up. But it's looking good and uh, I'm really happy with all the colors and how it's looking so far. I'll just put an interior uh, finish on the other side, which will be a lot quicker because I can just spray it. But this side will sand it down with 320. Um, this is the sandpaper that I use here. It's Norton's uh, champagne colors sandpaper and it's a 320. So. This is just going to cut down all those dust nibs, a little bit of roughness in the finish just from stuff settling in it and stuff that's in the wood that gets stuck in the first couple layers. So I usually do at least two coats before I do any sanding on varnish just because I don't want to go through the layer at all anywhere. I really want to build those coats up. So I'll just sand the whole door that way and then also the trim and we'll give this one another coat. I've been working with the varnish this morning now that it's dry. I mean, I should probably wait a few days. It's been about a day and a half since the varnish has been dried. And uh, you can see in the finish here, I'm gonna actually catch you in a little bit better of a light. So in the finish here that I haven't done anything with, you can see just a little bit of dust specks and settled into the grain. And this grain is very deep because it was weathered and just doesn't look very luxurious yet. So what, I, what I'm doing to finish this door off, and I do this with a lot of my varnish doors, is give it another sand and then buff it with a gray scotch pad followed by a white scotch pad, which is the most fine scotch pad you can use. Oh, sorry, this isn't gray, this is uh, red. So um, sand it with 320 first, and then this scotch pad, this scotch pad, and then I just buff it with a clean cotton cloth. And then you can see here, you've got a much more beautiful, luxurious finish without all the little specks of imperfection coming in. So I'm just gonna do that to the whole door and then I'm gonna follow that up and I do, I've been doing this lately with my exterior doors with um, some exterior uh, wax, which I need to go get another bottle, but this stuff is for exterior furniture or ex outdoor furniture. And it's just a, a penetrating wax mixture of beeswax, uh, carnauba, which is the, ha the hard wax that you can polish, and orange oil. And uh, it just helps soak into anything that um, maybe didn't get as enough, enough varnish that I couldn't see. I mean, there's a lot of these open fibers here. So I'm going to be doing that. And it's also going to give it a little bit more of that luster back. But first, I got a lot of buffing to do before we get to that stage. And uh, get it looking really, really nice and also feeling really, really smooth too. So I'm just going to sand 
until none of those little high points are visible, slash no little shiny spots left. And this is five coats of varnish that we ended up going. So there is lots of varnish here to work with, but you still don't want to go through a layer because unlike lacquer, varnish does not cross-link or amalgamate or combine with the previous layer. So each layer of varnish is its own. And if you go through one layer, you can kind of see like layers of paint that you never peeled away properly. You can see that edge there where the varnish was sanded through. So you just want to be really careful not to do that. So I'm just really sanding as much as I can. I'm not going to be able to get into all of the uh, grain, obviously, but the scotch pad will kind of help with that. So that's about as much sanding as I do. And then I take this guy. You really want to mind your edge first. And that goes for any sanding. Always mind your edge first and then hit your flat area. And I'm just kind of gonna push the scotch pad into those grains just to get rid of that little bit of a shiny spot so it blends in a little better. And then just really straighten out the scratches, which is what polishing is basically is, or buffing, I guess, not polishing. It's just creating scratches in one direction, usually with the grain so that the light doesn't reflect in 17 different areas. Just in one direction and you get that nice soft satin sheen. About that much. Then I'll wipe that off and take my white scotch pad, mind the edge again. And that's just gonna refine those scratches and then buff it out with a nice cloth. And there you go, you've got that nice even sheen across. Still have that open grain, which is fine, but you don't have any more of the uh, dull and shiny spots with all of the little points in between. So just continue on with the whole door that way. The other side has uh, three coats of lacquer and it, it looks good, so we're almost there. All right, so here it is, back on the house and looking awesome. Thanks so much for joining me on this one, guys. If you enjoyed this video, you can support the channel. Uh, the link is in the description below to buy a coffee or just keep on watching and subscribe, like the videos. And once again, thanks for joining. Cheers.